So I've got this main method. Now, just as a reminder, we could create an array like this. And we've been doing this for a while. And the other way to create the array, obviously, is to go like this. And here we are uh, uh, declaring the array and initializing it all in one step with the shortcut operator. And here we are declaring the array and initializing it to a value uh, with zero values. And then we can fill it in later by doing something like this. That would initialize the first element, et cetera. OK, so these are the two ways you know of to work with arrays so far. What we're going to talk about now is we're going to talk about expanding the array to be more of a two-dimensional structure. And so I'm going to start with a smaller example. And uh, let's say that now in order to indicate to the compiler that instead of having a single dimension on this array, there are going to be two dimensions, I'm going to use another set of brackets here. So it's going to be like that. And uh, I'm going to just start off with a small example. So I'll make mine. Uh, let's see here. Let's make this one. And that is my little example for you on a two dimensional array. And my question for you now is looking at this array, uh, how many rows does it have and how many columns does it have? That's my question for you. Please see if you can discuss with your partner to decide how many rows and columns that this does this array have. Okay, uh, let's see here. Mr. Sawyer, sir, look at this Look at this array right here. Um, wh what would you say would be the number of rows it has, sir? Uh, so there's only one place, Mr. Sawyer, that I know of where the columns are called rows and the rows are called columns. Do you know where that is, sir? It's in a classroom. I refer to the rows as being the columns. Everywhere else in the world, rows go side to side and columns go up and down. So how many rows would this have if I say the rows are goes left to right? Two. So this has two rows, and I think you will agree with me that it has three columns. We're all good there? Now, before, when we had a one-dimensional array and we asked the array, how long are you, it used to tell us how many elements are in the array. Can you see now that this is a little bit more of an ambiguous question? Uh, you might think that the answer maybe should be six, since there are six elements here. But actually, what this returns is something else. And let me just run this for you to give you an idea of what it is indeed I am asking and what the answer is going to be. So you can see that it answered, the answer it came up with was two. So what do you think is the question that's being asked here? Yes, sir. Mr. Degouge? How many rows? So this acts, is actually asking how many rows it has. Now we need to ask it, how many columns do you have? And that question is going to be slightly different. And this basically asks it, how many columns do you have? In fact, it's specifically asking, how many columns does the first row have? So let's run this. And you can see that it has three columns. We would say, we would say that this particular array has dimensions two by three, two by three. It will be like a rectangle that is two by three long. Now, when we access the elements of the array, it's a little tricky. Before, we used to have the data like this, and then we would have some number in here like, th like that, and it would be quite clear which one we're referring to. Now, we're going to have two sets of these. And what we're going to do is try and understand what the first coordinate means and what the second coordinate means. And I'd like you and your partner to run a few experiments by putting some numbers in here and seeing which of these numbers, let me uh, make these unique so make it clear. Uh, I'm just making it so that it's easier to figure out what's going on, oops. Uh, notice there's no comma after the last row, by the way. And notice this semicolon, which I historically forget a lot over the years, but it's important. Uh, okay, and so now what I want to know is if I were to put in some numbers here like uh, 0 and 1, which one would that access? Would that access uh, uh, the 2, the 4, the 5, the 1? I don't know. Run some experiments with your partner and try and figure out what does this coordinate mean and what does that coordinate mean? Please try and do those experiments now and try and figure out what the coordinates mean. Mr. Sneed, what is your guess, sir, as to what, what this uh, index refers to and what this index refers to? Any ideas? 
It is a coordinate, sir. And my question to you is, does this one right here, the first one, does it reference the row or the column? That is correct. So this represents the row and this represents the column. So here, for example, I would be in the first row, which is row zero, and I would be column one. So this would be column zero, this would be column one. So this, this item is referencing the number two here in this array. So let me just show you that. And you can see there is the two right there. Yes, sir. The indexing is still at zero for both rows and columns. Uh, I was going to say that um, it's a little easy to forget that it goes R and C. So I'm going to tell you a little story from my childhood. When I was your age, the Cola Wars were not a duopoly like Pepsi and Coke that it is today. There was a third Cola that was involved in the Cola Wars. Does anybody know the name of that Cola? Uh, you can see they didn't win because no one even has heard of it. It's called RC Cola. You can probably still buy it in some novelty shops somewhere. But here is what RC Cola looks like. And these guys were just about the same size as Coke and Pepsi. Now, I don't know enough about the Cola Wars to know what exactly happened that caused RC to kind of lose out and Coke and Pepsi kind of took over the world. But they were there for a long time. RC stands for Royal Crown Cola, by the way, but no one calls it that. Everyone called it RC. Now, if you have trouble remembering RC, you can also remember things like remote control or Roman Catholic or a whole bunch of other things. But you need to remember that in terms of arrays, the R index comes before the C index here. The other thing, which is a little bit confusing with respect to Java arrays is that you see how this is a nice rectangular shape here. Uh, it doesn't have to be. So for example, I could create an array like that. And now here you see that the first row has three elements in it or three columns, but the second row only has two columns. This is known as a jagged array. This is an example of a jagged array. So we have two types of arrays in Java. We have rectangular, which is what I was showing you before, versus jagged. Jagged means that we could have an array where the column sizes change. Now, the good news for you is on the AP exam, jagged arrays are not tested. I will never give you a question on a quiz or a test on jagged arrays. I will never, they will not ask you about jagged arrays on the actual AP test. I'm only mentioning this because if you ever see it somewhere, you won't be freaked out by it. It's just that in a beginner course like this, we're not going to use jagged arrays. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just focus on rectangular arrays. And I'm going to create a slightly different rectangular array this time. And I would like you to discuss with your partner what are the dimensions of this array here? Mr. Baker, sir, can you tell me what are the dimensions of this array right here? Very good, sir. It has four rows. Remember, the R comes before the C in Java arrays, and it's a four by two array. What I'd like you to do now is discuss with your partner, if you were going to print out the array to make it look like this sort of candy bar shape here, like this, what kind of a structure would we need to print out the array? Before, when we had a one-dimensional array, we had a for loop. What would we use now? Please discuss with your partner. I want it printed just like this, like with uh, two elements on each line and four lines. Like I want it like that. What would we use here? A, a for loop's not going to cut it now. We have two dimensions, two dimensions. We could use a for each loop. Uh, let's just stick with the for loop for a second. How can we modify the for loop? Yes, miss. Nested for loops is correct. So what we're going to do is we're going to use two for loops. Now, so far, in every single for loop we have written, we always use i, j, and k as the indices. And you could do that here. I strongly discourage it. You should use what letters now for your two for loops? Who can tell me? Yes, Miss Caitlin. R and C. See if you can write the two for loops. Let me get you started. 
and there might be something to write over here as well. I would like to have this all filled in so that when it prints, it prints one and two. You don't have to print these brackets. You don't have to print these commas. Just print one, two on one line, four, five on the next, seven, nine on the next, and the two fours on the last line. See if you can figure out with your partner how to write this code to parse a two-dimensional array. If you're stuck and don't know what's going on at all, I'll give you a little head start here. We're going to be on uh, two-dimensional arrays for about three weeks. Three weeks. I have a small surprise for you at the end of class today. And uh, let's see here. Can someone help me finish up? Mr. Garofalo, sir, can you help me finish my little loop here for uh, printing the two-dimensional array? So that's very good. Now, this data R is a, a really an advanced technique to deal with jagged arrays. But I've already told you that your arrays are never going to be jagged. So you don't have to do it like this. Uh, you can do something simpler here and just put a zero there. Okay? But this is actually the preferred way of doing it because it will allow you to print jagged arrays also. And what do I put in here, Mr. Garofalo? Okay, and now I want to have it print a new line at the end of each row. So what do I put here, sir? I forgot to put a little space here. Just space everything out nicely. Let's try that again. Okay, there you go. There's your little two-dimensional array. Uh, I'm going to call free time in a couple of minutes right here. I want to surprise you by letting you know that we have covered all the new material there is for two-dimensional arrays. That was it. The entire three weeks that are coming up is all practice. Okay, that's all you need to know. 15 minutes to learn, a lifetime to master. Okay, that's all you need to know about two-dimensional arrays for the AP exam, but it will take you three weeks to get used to them.